Hey guys, I just wanted to follow up with a video for the people who said they were interested in seeing what Frankenlog looks like uh, in use. So this is, uh, I've been using Frankenlog now for a little under two weeks, I want to say. Has it been that long? I'm not sure. But uh, this is a Frankenlog that's all the way, that's like in use right now. So very quickly, just to say what this is, if you didn't see uh, the other uh, video that I made. Frankenlog is a combination of a monthly and weekly log and uh, habit trackers, uh, five daily habit trackers and three weekly habit trackers. And I also used a Dutch door to be able to keep all the um, you know, monthly tasks. So monthly tasks that have a date attributed to them uh, go here and then they get logged in the calendar up here. And if they don't have a date attributed to them, they're just things that need to get done that are going to get migrated from month to month and they go on the task list like doing the Dutch door like this because it doesn't cover up the calendar then when I want to look at the dated stuff on this side. And, you know, it does give me a fair amount of room. It looks like I'm going to be far from using up all the space. I also want to mention that this is a B5 book. I did just get Ryder's new um, bullet journal from his uh, special book he just put out, and so it was my first try at putting Frankenlog into a, into a regular uh, A5, and it does fit. Uh, it will work. Anyways... So the way Frankenlog works is that if you have things that are due, uh, you'll see I have columns over here with the different weeks of the of the month, and I see I have those day, uh, numbered here. And I started out by having the first two weeks on this page, and then the, the next three weeks on this page. What I found was I was very quickly running out of room for the for the three weeks. So in a panic, uh, I started implementing Frankenlog 1.1, which is to just have all five weeks for the entire spread which uh, makes this a little wider, but I think in the long run it'll be better because I don't like being restricted for any given section of the month. Uh, and I haven't told you how it works yet, so let me show you. Like today is, we'll look at uh, yesterday, right? So yesterday was the 24th, and you'll see I've got CDLR, so that means nothing to anybody, right? But I know it's the fourth, uh, I know it's the fourth week, and I like to put this here just so it's a quick glance. So I know it's the fourth week, so I just look at the fourth week for CDLR, so I see uh, C is for uh, uh, Angela's uh, review. D, I have a per career class pro and cons list I was supposed to do. And then L was uh, expansion planning meeting at 9.30. And R was, uh, where is R? R, R, was, R was over here because I ran out of room. Uh, I had a meeting with uh, my supervisor there. And, and so what I do is when an event comes up, like let's say here on the 30th, you see I've got a uh, an interview coming in for a day for an appointment. She's going to be here on the 30th at 11 So I wrote that in I put the date here and then I just pick the next available letter for that column You see I can use a through Z on every week of the month Meaning that the letters can get re reused. I won't run out. I have 26 letters for every week And I think it's unlikely that I will use 26 that I'll have 26 You know dated events in a single calendar week. My biggest problem uh, My biggest problem has always been running out of space uh, the reason I love bullet journaling is because I don't run out of space. I can use as much space as I need, and I'm never going to hit a little box that says you run out of room. Frankenlog is risky for me because it does have limitations, but I made them big enough that I don't think it'll be a problem. So that's how I use it. Every every week has its own A through Z, and I can. It's really actually super easy. Like today, I just said N and S. That was a canceled event there, so I just said N and S. So I can just look over here for. Uh, uh, where is it? I'm making it look harder than it is. Oh, fourth. Sorry, I'm in the wrong month. So, N, I have to do invoices for Bacani and Miguel. And S uh, was uh, Paul's out of town and on call. Uh, S is a good example of something that uh, this allows you to have events that spread multiple weeks. So, for this event, it's S for the fourth week. Uh, so, I'm going to make it S for the fifth week, too, even though I haven't gotten that high up in the alphabet. Uh, because that way... And it's going to go from the 25th to the 30th, right? So I can just put for the 25th through the uh, 30th, S, 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 S. And so S means the same thing for both weeks, which means I can put a, a date spread in here versus just a single date. And that means I can have events that wrap, uh, they could go the whole month. They could wrap the entire time across all of them as long as I just give them the same letter. If it's going to be something that repeats every day on the same day, or every week on the same day, I could just give it the same letter across here and just...
sorry, I got a phone call, it distracted me. So if I have something that happens on every Monday, like do time cards every Monday, I could use the same letter across here. Let's just say, for example, I was using R. I could put R in all four of these, or all five of these, and just write Monday here, and then say time cards. And then, and every Monday, I could just write that letter on every Monday. Uh, and so it's nice because even though it sounds a little convoluted when I'm explaining it to you, it's not in practice. It's just a matter of looking at the day that you want to see, like FGS, okay? So uh, in the fourth week, FGS. So F is Lake Geneva with Jenny. That's going to be awesome. And you'll see it carries over to the next week. So it's the 26th through the 28th. So I've got, uh, you know, the F here, F here, uh, and F here. And then G is, uh, I don't know what G is yet. Oh, just off work. <laughs> I was just writing that it was off work. And I did that as a, as a different letter because I'm actually going to be off work one day extra. So I've got G, G. GG. And then uh, last is S, and that is over here. Oh, Paul out of town. We already said that. So that's Paul out of town. So that is how I'm able to, you have a calendar. And the reason I say that this is a combination of a monthly log and a weekly log is because it has all my monthly stuff here that, uh, that I put onto here. So I'm able to see on a weekly basis the events or tasks that have to be done on a given day. The day, things like this would never end up on that anyways because these are not timed events these are like in the getting things done world just things that need you do whenever you can so they're just gonna end up getting marked off here uh, when they're finished they will almost never end up on a particular day of the week uh, day of the month it doesn't matter it won't be in the daily log at all they just get taken off right off of here whereas any events or tasks that are in here are probably going to get uh, you know scheduled instead of actually finished because the day that I start that daily log, I'm gonna to wanna to take this off of here and schedule it on that day if it's an actual task. If it's an event, it's probably just gonna stay there because I can see it up here. It's rare that I'm gonna be trying to look at this and try to look up here and see what this means. I'm always going the other way. I'm looking at what I've written up here and then just going down here to see what it means. And even though it looks like I was stumbling a little, I was stumbling because I'm on video, like trying to do this. Uh, in one take and not screw it up. The reality is it's usually very easy for me to just look up here and it's, you know, KAQ and it's the fourth week. So I go over here and I do, you know, there's K, there's a meeting there, clinical admin meeting. Uh, a was, uh, uh, oh, uh, what was that? I can't even see because somebody's texting me. Oh, buy something for school. And then uh, Q was over here. Oh, really? No habits at all? Come on, man. I made myself a note. So again, I can even make notes in here uh, relative to the date, the same way that Ryder would make notes. You know, he says he likes to use his monthly calendar as a way to like look back. I have no idea how he operates like that. I love Ryder. I love everything he's given us, but I cannot even begin to understand how he doesn't have a monthly calendar for planning ahead. So anyways, that's why it's a monthly to me, because I can look at the entire month or uh, a week ahead and I can see what's going on. Now, under here, you'll see that I've got these little symbols. That's my trackers. So every day I've got five different habits that I want to do. This this has gotten absurdly long. I should make a different one, but I won't. Um, so every time that I finish one of these, this was so, uh, if I finish all of them, that that's like, that's a good day. That's a star day, right? Because I've done one, two, three, four, five, all of the things. I get all the marks. And so I can say like I had a three star week because I did everything good. I didn't have a three star week, as you can see. I did not a damn thing, which is why I was scolding myself down here. No habits at all. Come on, man. Uh, that weird writing, by the way, is like palm graffiti. Sometimes I like find myself accidentally using palm graffiti when I'm trying to write in here, just out of like a weird old habit. And then, so that's my daily plan. So that means every day I've got a space that I can track five different habits. And then over here is a weekly tracker. So each week I've got three things that I can track. Uh, I'm doing yoga, which I want to go twice a week. Uh, this, uh, uh, this meeting I like to go to, and then um, you know going over our budget and bills every week. And if I do it, um, then I would be able to like, yay, I did, you know, I went to yoga once, and I'm not even using, that's not my good pen, forgive me, Bujo. Uh, and then if I did it twice, I could do this. And really, if I wanted to do it more than that, then I could still use like my other system over there and, you know, do a star and say, hey, I did it five times. Uh, if I didn't already know uh, off the top of my head how many times I wanted to do one of these habits I could like do dots up here and say that's how many times I want to do each of these but I don't want to do them daily so I can't track them daily the only way to track them is to I want to be able to do it weekly so that's why I have these over here so this allows me to have three you could stuff arguably four or five if you wanted to if you wanted to be crowded uh, three weekly habits each week 
And then over here, it gives me the opportunity to do five daily habits. It lets me see my entire month at a glance, whether or not I had stuff scheduled for a given day. It lets me look back and see whether or not I did my habits. It lets me look at an entire week at a glance to see what I have going on and whether my weekend is free. And it gives me a single spread where I'm able to see all of the tasks that I have going on, um, whether, you know, they might get migrated at a later time. And I'm seeing um, all of the timed stuff. So in a way, it's very much like the Calendex. The reason I don't like Calendex is I don't like having to um, flip that many pages all the time. I like being able to sort of see it all in one spread, as, if that's possible. So that was kind of the point behind Frankenlog, was to be able to do it all in one spread. So it's Calendex-like because you're just putting a, 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 a whatever, a note here, and then referencing over here. Uh, and it's also, obviously, the Alistair method, right? I'm sort of stealing from the Alistair method, except using letters instead of dots. A lot of people use the date, but I didn't want to use dates because I wanted to be able to spread over multiple weeks, which is why the dates are over here in their own column. Uh, and then lastly, you know, the Dutch door so that we could get it all onto one spread. One thing I've noticed is that uh, this tends to get bent a lot and it gets kind of floppity. Uh, I've gotten into the habit of just leaving it like this, which is fine. It doesn't matter um, as long as it stays out of the way of the calendar so I can see both sides. And in Frankenlog 1.1 for November, I will definitely be um, doing the uh, five, five in a row. I've already done the one for November like in preparation, so really all this stuff would technically be on my future log uh, and then get migrated here at the beginning of the month, but I got ahead of myself because I'm excited about Frankenlog. Um, but I had originally started this with the three weeks over here, or two weeks over here, and three weeks over here. So there's just a mess of whiteout going on over there. Uh, I think uh, December will be a lot prettier uh, if they even manage to finish December or get December into this one. You guys wanted to know how it is working for me. It is working. Uh, it is working well. I I like the system. I'm still getting used to. I'm trying to get see if I can just get off of digital entirely. So like not even using a Google Calendar which it's hard. I, I think to some extent I'm always going to end up using it because when somebody sends me an invite that has like the webinar address in the invite, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to come, I'm not going to put all of that into my journal. I'm going to end up leaving that in Google calendar because it just makes sense. The whole point is to, for efficiency and productivity, not to just like do things for the sake of doing them. Um, so this is good. I, I, I am enjoying Frankenlog. It, the habit tracker is definitely excellent. The being able to see my, my weekly without having a weekly spread is excellent because I don't want to migrate that much. And I like the idea of literally having everything except for my dailies all in one spot that I can get to very easily. Uh, I am so new at bullet journaling that you should not take anything I say uh, <laughs> uh, for a whole lot of credit or like take it with a grain of salt. Um, you know, I should definitely, I, it hasn't even been a month. I started bullet journaling at the beginning of this month, so I know nothing. Uh, what I have learned is that I have a lot more to do than a lot of people with bullet journals. And that's not bragging. That's just, it is what it is. I could never imagine having one page that has, uh, you know, all of your stuff for, you know, writer has like, let me get past her. In my original October, like, oh, here's your calendar. And then over here, you would have all your tasks. Well, I couldn't even, my tasks at the uh, October 2nd, you know, <laughs> we're already filling up more than one page. So I could never do just the monthly spread that he does. <coughs> Excuse me, the monthly log. And that's why Franken, uh, Franken log was born. So <coughs> that's, uh, that's, the, that's the status of it now. I'll give you guys an update again uh, in November if I come up with any changes. And um, yeah, if you watched all 14 minutes of this, then my hat's off to you because I'm not even sure I would, but I did want to get back to the folks who said they wanted to see this in action. So thanks, guys.